So first let's look at some mementos from my arrival into and departure from Pyongyang, North Korea. North Korea has only one state airline, Air Koryo, and they operate the only flights in and out of the country. There's usually only one a day um, from and to China. I uh, arrived from Beijing and departed to Shenyang, and this is my boarding pass. I was seated in seat 16E. This was on an old Soviet era jet. And uh, this is the air choreo version of uh, an air sickness bag, and here's a moist towelette. Now let's look at some reading material from North Korea. Foreigners are certainly allowed to buy any number of uh, souvenirs and there are uh, a significant number of English language publications and literature available for sale. Um, some of you may have heard that in North Korea all books, all works of art are created solely by the Kim family, specifically uh, in the era in which I was in uh, North Korea, that would have been by Kim Jong-il, and that is somewhat true. Um, you'll see here there are actually a couple of books that are either co-written or uh, written by someone else. But here's an example of a couple of books that were written allegedly by or um, in conjunction with Kim Jong-il. Uh, this one on the Juche philosophy, Juche uh, being the philosophy of self-reliance that essentially deifies the ruling family. Um, this I'm sure is considered a classic. And then this one on the idea of reunification of the two Koreas, which is um, figures prominently in, in North Korean propaganda, this um, fantasy of um, a unified communist um, Korean peninsula. And then we have another one that wasn't actually written by Kim Jong-il, but is on the subject of uh, U.S. forces who remain to this day in South Korea. Here's an interesting one called Welcome Speak in Korean. It says it was made uh, in 1989, Pyongyang, North Korea. This is basically a phrase book. And we open this and we see some Korean writing and various topics that are covered. Let's look at this, the first page. Conversational formulas. So the first word they teach you is comrade. Tongmu. A very interesting book. And this is a children's comic book. M much of the uh, Cartoons in North Korea, those that are shown on state television, and this appears to be a comic book version of a televised cartoon, perhaps, um, have anti-American themes, very explicit anti-American themes. It's not apparent whether this is one of them. And then, uh, this is an English language newspaper called the Pyongyang Times. This is different from the official um, Korean language daily, which I believe is called the uh, Rodong Sung Moon. Um, but since this is English language, it's made uh, specifically for foreigners uh, or for the outside world to read. But nonetheless, uh, you can see that uh, the many of the articles are devoted to coverage of the Kim family and uh, admiration of their achievements. And we get to a political section here in which uh, an article protesting the US military buildup as well as an article claiming that um, sentiment against 
Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was on the rise. And the sports section. Now these are items that are lifted from North Korean hotels and I only spent time in two hotels in North Korea. The majority of the time was spent in Pyongyang at the Yangakdo Hotel which is on Yangak Island in the middle of the Taedong River and uh, it features a nine-hole golf course. It has a revolving restaurant on one of the highest floors, um, a casino, a massage parlor, bowling alley, discotheque. Um, it is, it was at the time at least the most luxurious hotel in North Korea which is certainly not saying much uh, but this is the same hotel in which um, Otto Warmbrier, the American who was relatively recently arrested in North Korea uh, for having stolen or attempted to steal a propaganda poster from uh, one of the floors of this hotel and uh, to this date at least he remains imprisoned in North Korea in a labor camp. Um, luckily I was able to lift these items without, uh, without any difficulty. Um, I also spent time at the Yangsan Hotel, uh, which uh, was the uh, visit uh, to uh, the mountains, uh, the International Friendship Palace in Myoyangsan. And here we have a Do Not Disturb sign in English and French and Korean. Here are just a couple of pamphlets and postcards that uh, I acquired in Pyongyang. The one on the left uh, is an English language publication that seems to attempt to describe some of the momentous economic uh, output and commerce in which the North Korean uh, economy participates. And then this item, which uh, features the Mansu uh, Hill Monument on the front, is all in Korean. But again, features some of the alleged accomplishments of the North Korean people. And then we just have a series of postcards. Uh, this one, for some reason, appears to be in French, Etudiant, Etudiant pour la Corée, and uh, features various scenes from across North Korea. And then we have a series of postcards devoted specifically to the Arch of Triumph, which is the North Korean version of the Arc de Triomphe. And here we have some additional items of cultural significance to North Korea and Korean cultural in general. We have a figure from North Korea of a woman dressed in a traditional um, hanbok. And then we have a number of buttons representing traditional Korean culture. purchase in Pyongyang. Well, here's something that you won't see every day, which is a bottle of North Korean mineral water. And this is uh, called Sindoksan, uh, that means uh, Sindok Mountain. And I believe that the story is that this water comes from uh, the waters that flow from that particular mountain. subject of North Korean money, tourists are not permitted to hold or spend North Korean currency while in North Korea. Surprisingly enough, many shops prefer U.S. dollars 
they also accept euros and Chinese yuan. But this is genuine North Korean money. You can purchase commemorative coins at, uh, at shops that cater to foreigners in Pyongyang, but you can't spend any of the money. Most of these shops for foreigners require what they call hard currency, which is foreign currency. And you can see on the back of this money, we see some of the feats and monuments of the North Korean people, a hydroelectric dam, a Workers' Party monument, and here are some commemorative coins, one one coins. Now fans are certainly part of traditional Korean culture and I think they're very popular items in the tourist trade in North Korea and I acquired these two during my trip. Well, these are stamps that I purchased when in North Korea and stamps are quite abundant uh, because they're a great uh, vessel I think from the North Korean perspective for carrying the communist propaganda message and uh, many are in the style of communist regimes past. Um, these are some politically charged stamps here And on occasion, you'll come across a stamp that uh, features some of the uh, violently anti-American propaganda that you see on many billboards in North Korea. Here's one example here of a North Korean soldier pointing to uh, uh, defeated American soldiers that are depicted beneath him. But those are the two general kinds of propaganda posters that you'll find in North Korea. They either depict uh, North Korean military or victory against the United States or they depict uh, communist workers paradise themed scenes. Here's a stamp collection or a booklet of stamps that focuses exclusively on means of transportation. And so you see locomotives and trucks as well as planes from Air Corio. This commemorative stamp on the front is of an uh, Air France Concorde, but was not included in the collection itself on the inside. And then this book here contains several pages of stamps, slightly more interesting. I'm not sure if you would consider these stamps, but um, this is the Kim family going back to um, the father Kim and then of course uh, young Kim Jong-il and some elder members of the Kim family
ping pong. And buttons, the sort that you wear on your shirt, are a huge part of North Korean culture, uh, both in the tourist trade as well as for everyday North Koreans. Um, as you may know, all North Korean citizens, more or less from birth, are required to, uh, to wear um, portraits of Kim, Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il uh, pinned to their lapels for the rest of their lives, every day. And not doing so would uh, undoubtedly bring about the harshest of penalties. Uh, North Korean families must also keep uh, very well polished and maintained portraits of the Kims in uh, their living rooms. But these buttons over here on the left are more tourist oriented as opposed to ones that everyday North Koreans would wear uh, on a daily basis. And uh, these generally break down in just a couple of different categories. These here in general celebrate uh, the communist ideal or they deal with uh, specific monuments in Pyongyang, either the Chalima statue or the Arch of Triumph we see here or the Tower of the Juche idea. Um, here are some buttons that deal with sports, sports of weightlifting and badminton and table tennis and um, there are two species of flowers named after the ruling Kims, the Kim jong il and the Kim il sung -ia. And then just some uh, additional miscellaneous buttons that deal with, uh, with conferences or places. And then finally, the buttons that no tourists would be allowed to wear but that everyday North Koreans are required to wear and these are the ones that you will always find in any photo of a North Korean in everyday life. And we have a pin with the portrait of Kim Il-sung, Kim Jong-il, Kim Il-sung and then the Kims together on one pin. After I returned from North Korea, I shared my photos and they did generate, uh, at least uh, for some time, uh, a great deal of interest. Um, and one of my personal favorites is this one of a uh, North Korean soldier taken at the uh, DMZ in Panmunjom. But this book is a textbook called Uncovering North Korea, published by Stanford University. And uh, there's some other photos here inside. And all of them were from my trip. It was a great experience um, presenting some outstanding opportunities uh, for a documentary style photographer and uh, the cultural exchange was uh, very rewarding and um, it's something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. Thank you for the opportunity to share these mementos with you.